All right, hello world. Here's the traditional sip of drink that I'm actually out of. Ah, gotta love it. I made a, uh, a few adjustments today to the Windows headphones. I finally figured out where there was an equalizer in there and made some adjustments so the audio isn't as like punchy in your ears. I think it's compression or something like that, but um, it feels a lot better even though it's a little bit louder. Um, loudness equalization was a part of that. Um, and then turning off all the random crap that they had, trying to make it sound better, um, which strikes me as one of those things where it sounds like maybe it sounds better in the store when there's a sh ton of noise or something, but hurts my ears. It's probably a little loud. I'm going to bring it back a little bit. So hopefully that's all right. Uh, the other thing I built, let's see if that actually works. Yeah, look at that. So I built a little uh, thing in Keyboard Maestro. So check this out. It's gonna throw all those windows over there. And then it's gonna break. Oh. There's the chat. Why didn't that work? BB edit? All right, hang on, we're gonna fix that. So what I built was this little script in Keyboard Maestro. Oh, must be that BB Edit isn't there. BB Edit. So let's try this again. I should alphabetize these. Ooh, I can alphabetize these. Um, because we have our little alphabetizer. So we can do that and do this, 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 this. Nice. So we want BB edit to go F C F finder to go. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way to put those like in a text variable somewhere or a variable that keyboard my striker can share. I'll bet there is. Because right now what I need to do is I've got these two, you can probably barely see them depending on how big your um, screen is, but I've got these two keyboard maestro macros that go through and resize windows for me. Uh, and so the, the first one basically just resizes everything down into the view area that you see. Um, now here's a question. Why is that? Oh, I see, because it's not there. So let's actually add keyboard maestro. Uh, oh, it is there. Why didn't it size? M -A -E -S -T -R -O. I don't know why that didn't size. Oh, well, whatever. Be fine. Uh, but let's try this real quick. So we're going to size for the stream, which should move everything. Oops. Item finder isn't used by the Mac and can't be opened. Okay. Hmm. Let's okay, let's take finder out of there. And then let's take finder out of here. I don't know why. So resizing it. Oh yeah, we're gonna open the running app. So I guess you could just do Finder independently. So this was kind of an interesting thing going through and figuring out how to do um, all this movement stuff in Keyboard Maestro. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, it's even more complicated than I realized, um, even though it is pretty straightforward. Um, after you kind of get your head around all the all the aspects of it, but it's for each, and you make a variable name running app inside a collection of the running apps, you make another for each loop that basically just looks at all these lines. And then if the, if the names match or if the first name is contained in the second one, so if there's a running app whose name matches Safari, then you go into this. So that, that's the if loop or the if conditional, then you go here and you open that app, which brings it to the front. Oh, I wonder if you could 
Oh yeah, I couldn't figure out how to make the app activate, how to make it come forward um, without like calling it an open. Um, let me actually look here real quick. Is there an activate? Activate a specific application, but I think you have to tell it the name. I don't think you can pass it. Yeah, this is what I was looking for, but you can't basically say, you can't pass it something. Um, I was looking at doing it with Yeah. I was looking at doing it with um, Apple Script, which I may fall back to because fallback or fallback um, Apple Script has like an activate statement. Um, and that's different than open because like f basically what I just told this thing to do when I put finder in the match list is I told it to open Finder with Finder. Because um, when you open apps with this particular command, that's what the recommendation is, is to use Finder as the opener. Um, but I wonder... That may actually be worth trying to figure out. Um, this is the app I'm actually going to use to do the first thing I want to do too, which is make a... So I'm using the keyboard camera now. I'm going to do my best not to, so I'm opening my password manager and putting it on a different screen so that if I need passwords, I don't have to type in my master password to get into my one, into my password manager. So I don't think that's going to be a problem, but what I want to do is create a, uh, something in keyboard maestro that if I, so I've, I've, I've appended, I've made my password longer and I've put a string of characters in front of there that's specifically designed. So if I type them, it'll trigger keyboard maestro to say, to like do an alert of some type. Um, so we'll do that here in a minute, but I want to see if we can figure out this, um, how to launch applications with, uh, no, yeah, see, I spent some time on it. And the trick is it gives it, when you're going through this loop, this app, this running app, uh, makes it a path. So we can actually put this in here. Uh, let's try this. Let's see if we can disable this. Is this gonna work? I haven't done very much stuff with Keyboard Maestro. Um, today's by far the most complicated thing I did. Whoa. Hmm, that was unexpected. Oops. Oh, am I gonna have to kill them all? Nope. Oh, come on. I just quit? Nope. Oh, these are just hanging out there? What are they actually in? They're not in Keyboard Maestro. They're just random. Well, that's disconcerting. All right. Oh, there's probably a daemon out there running. These days I'm gonna get rid of that. So running app, display text. Oh, I guess it passed it. Execute Mac, I don't know what that is.
Isn't this what we had? No, guess not. Delete, d d d display text briefly. All right, let's see if we get this right by just adding that and see what happens. Yeah, applications, loop back app. Oh, uh, here. Try that. Oh, 22 new notifications. Enter by typing. Into what? Here, we'll do it this way. So that's all the apps that are running, but it gives you that path. And I don't know how in, so that's why I was using, oh, well, let will just do all these. Apparently you don't have to click twice if you click the red dot. I like that better. This mix sounds a little hot. So why is that green? It's kind of weird. Oh, whatever. Made all these adjustments, but I think it looks doing okay. All right, so now I'm into this. Uh, we'll figure this out. Um, I'm just going to go into script editor. I don't know if you can hear my, hear my motorcycle neighbor or not. There you go. So if we're here, Tell application finder to act activate pops it up. But when I tried it with, well, here, let's go get it from Keyboard Maestro one more time. So give this one more try. Oh, the windows stay in front of everything too. That's awesome. I've seen some people or some gamers go through and do those like targeting things or whatever. That is super impressive. See, it freaks out. I don't like how long it's running. Uh oh. Loopback wasn't even running. Must be in the background somewhere. Okay. Um, document can be closed while the script is running. Oh, trouble. Lesson learned. Try it with Safari. Okay, Safari did work. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So there was another trick. I'm remembering this now. I couldn't figure out how to put the variable in the Apple script, which we're going to figure out now. I spent a while on this and I, like, I got it working. 
if it wasn't for that safari bug right or that finder bug right now it would be fine but i want to solve that Test open with Apple script. Well, eh, I'll just call it open with. Okay, and so all we're gonna do, we wanna set a variable. Uh, set a variable to text. App to open and then Apple script. Oh, these are, t yeah, sorry, I don't think I can do much about the font size with this one. Execute an Apple script. So We'll just do that. So try. Uh oh, oh, there it went. And let's put this in and try that. Can't get application. Let's literally copy and paste. Applications. Let's try that. There's Safari. Okay, now we gotta figure out how to do it as a variable. What you need is the use Apple script to get and set. Ah, gotcha. Keyboard M A E S T R O. Keyboard Meister Engine. Set app to activate to get variable. Should have called it the same thing. Intel. All right, let's just try that and see if this pukes. Nope, okay, it launched it. So can you put that there? I think two dashes is Apple script comment. to tell a variable application, not a variable in an application, assigning application to a variable. There we go, let's see if this works. So 
set application to using terms from application tell application the application to your thing. So wait a minute. Wait, wait. Ah, we missed the S again. So that works. All right, let's back this off to just Safari. This is all the same, right? Yeah. This is the same. Everything is good there. It certainly looks like uh, let's just make sure that doesn't matter. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You got to run the whole thing. <sighs> I was just trying this. But it's looking for this variable, which is set in this one. And so when I just hit try on this one, it wasn't trying the whole thing. That got me. So. Run. Boom. Uh. And it should be getting the path each time. That's another thing that won't explode. Let's see if this works. BB edit. There you go. Took a second. Apple script sometimes seems like it takes a little while. I don't know why. I'm guessing it's blocking and not asynchronous, but okay. So we've got this, which we're just going to copy for a minute and then go back to update for stream. And we want to turn this off. That's the other thing about this type style of development is like, it's just these widgets and boxes and stuff. And it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's a really different thing. I've, I've seen like some of my coworkers use apps like this a lot. And it always, like something about it always just makes me freak out a little bit. Um, largely I'm sure because I haven't done very much of it, but it's like, where's the code and how do you like you're nested and all these things. And like, it just looks, Weird, I don't know. But so what we're gonna try and do now is run our Apple script here. Oh, ignore results. Display results in the Weaver window. Type results. Oh, I guess you can type it out if you're in some other thing. Paste them, save. Depend asynchronously, we don't want to do copy the results to a clipboard. Okay, interesting. I didn't realize how complicated this app was. Um, it does a lot. Uh, it's any little thing you can think of. It's, it's basically just a whole bunch of little bitty things, but it's all the little bitty things. Um, all right, so get variable running app. So that should be updated. App to activate. All right, so we're looking at all the running apps. App to resize 
is these text strings. If running app, which is the full path, contains app to resize, which is just a string, we're going to do the execute of the Apple script, pulling running app, which is the full path, into this portion of the Apple script, which activates it, which pushes it up front. This is off right now. Then we're going to look at all the windows of the front app with window count, and we're going to go from one to however many there are and resize them. And that's it. And then we quit some other stuff. Oh, and then we move the chat, the chat window. Yeah. Um, and then I've got some other stuff that quits out. This is my prep for a stream script because I did all this stuff manually before. So it's like, ah, let's see if we can automate it. Um, probably took me a couple hours to figure it out. Um, if I'm being generous. Uh, but let's see. So this we can try because we're just trying this blue wrapper and all the rest of the variable setting and then is inside it. So let's try and see what happens. Um, oh, let's add finder back in. Cause what we're trying to do is run this without the finder error. And if this works, I'm going to go ahead and put finder over here. Turn it off for a minute, just so we don't accidentally do anything. Actually alphabetize it. And it's also weird because there's not like a real test that like, it spooks me kind of doing this stuff because like, I feel like I'm going to break something somehow um, in a way that I'm much more confident with code. Like I don't really see what's going on here as much. And again, some of that is just experience, but it's, it's, loops, setting variables, and conditionals. I mean, this is a programming language. All right, try it, try. There we go, everything's moving, things are moving. See, it takes a lot longer to do those activations. I think it's done. I guess we could, ooh. Oh yeah, I moved that. Freak me out. Yeah, let's actually add text. Display text. Briefly. You won't see this because it's a notification outside the view area that you've got. Um, uh, set up for stream. It's complete. How about that? So that way I've got some idea when it's done. Yeah, so it didn't freak out on the finder again. It didn't resize the window though. Did I turn that off? I might've had that turned off. Oh, I just hit try too. So it's not giving me my finalization message. Oh, get rid of that in a minute. Run, move and resize. Why didn't this go? Because it looked like Sublime Text 2 didn't resize. Uh. See, that's one of the other things with this. Just like, 
All right, I'm gonna take Finder back out so it doesn't eat itself. Did I, wait, 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 hang on. We're gonna run this whole thing and see what happens. There it went. It just gave me the little thing saying it's complete up there. Okay, I think that's working, but it may be just some timing issues, like one thing fires and the rest of it doesn't catch up yet. Um, race conditioning type stuff. So can you copy these? Hmm, kinda. Put that there. Turn that off. Now if this is the same, oh, we can put our action down here. It says display a text. Uh, setup for chat is complete. And I like, I want to hit save, but there's not really a save. It's just go. I definitely am still printing out all those windows. Yeah, so there's the apps that don't have windows open or that didn't pass that check for... Uh, actually, let me do this real quick. Does that could work? What's there? Yeah. Because... Oh, I'm going to let it do its thing for a second there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it went faster with the open. I don't care that much about it to check. It's fine. Uh, all right, one more time. We're going to close all these. Where do we put in? Here's that display text. Where was it? I just saw it. All right, so look at our apps, do our text strings. Yeah, it's also weird. Like you're taking this list and moving it into a variable that's up above it, which is not as a programmer or doing all the other languages. I know you flip that. You start with defining all the things and then you call them. Um, I mean, I guess you could pretend that this is like, that's kind of what it is, is you're like an inline array uh, or list or whatever you want to call it. All right. Oops. Uh, let's... Do it and see what happens. So, right, try this. So it's shifting everything over to the right a little bit. Um, when I do that, does it go the right way? No, it goes the opposite way. Um, and then the last thing it does is it brings my chat window in there. So very rarely do I have people in chat, but so I keep the window off to the side, the chat window off to the side, so I can see it, but it's not. There's nothing on stream that shows it. But if somebody's chatting, what I can do now is just hit that hotkey and I don't know, some number of seconds later, it'll, you can see the actual chat. Um, Cause what I had been doing is kind of dragging it back and forth, but this is like, you know, chat mode is on um, and I can flip it back and all the windows kind of expand out for the full size. Let me 
Manipulation f window failed. I couldn't see. Are the keyboard meister logs? Lobs. It's like logs. Open the log and VB edit. Long press. I'm guessing it's in console. Got it irritated to jump the solution, a macro of course. Path to library folder from user domain is text. Okay, so now. Actually, I can do this. Library logs, keyboard maestro. Oh, that's cool. Library logs, keyboard maestro, engine. Run application query took a while. Here's the th thing that we had a problem with. Manipulation window failed to find window with index two and macro set up for stream while executing move and resize with window with window index. That is not helpful. It's mostly fine. It looks like it's, I, I think it's like just a timing thing that's going on. Um, that if it bugs me at some point, I'll mess with it. But like by and large, that worked. Uh, just run it one more time. See, it is slow though. That is super slow. There's a, there's like windows managers and stuff out there that can do this, but kind of like the idea of see if I can do it in code. Um, but like I have a windows manager that isn't quite as uh, refined, like specific. And maybe it could be, I don't know, but like that's how fast that works to get there. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll play with this. It's it's interesting. Um, that's slow enough that it's gonna bug me. That I'll keep messing with it. I, it's fine for right now. Like this is the first version, so like we're good. Um, yeah. When it moves, oh, it's still going. There you go. And see, I'm not sure it flipped the finder window there. Yeah, see, it's missing them sometimes. It didn't flip this. Okay. I'll work on that later. Because um, it definitely should be a thing you can just do. Um, and again, there's apps out there that'll do that. But I like, I've got a really specific kind of window size that I set up for all this stuff. Um, and it's based off the Divi thing. Uh, which is the app that I use and what I want is to be able, but there's not like a setting that makes it go like this basically. Um, and so that's what I'm trying to do. And I could, there are different ways I could set that up. That was the first attempt that didn't work yet. So 
more to follow. In the meantime, see, that just goes zoop. Uh, but we are going to use Keyboard Maestro for something else, which is a some type of alert. Um, password warning. So actually, I should do this. Kind of figure out, like, I haven't posted most of these yet because it's, I just, there's a lot of stuff to it. Got to back that off of my headphones just a little bit. That's better. Maybe. Yeah. Can't tell. Um,. Yeah. So, password warning alert. Siren. <coughs> Let's add an action. Sound? Can we play sounds? Play sound. What else we got? Hmm. Ooh, interesting. So I could play a couple different things and make sure I'm going through all different release places. Eh, whatever. Be fine. But yeah. Yeah, we'll do a couple. So this should be hopefully straightforward. I don't know if you can hear these sounds coming over the mic or not. sound. I think that's going to be it. Uh, play sound. Whoops. Sure. And so hopefully this can be, whoops, just as simple as simulate five deletes for, I don't know what that means. Simulate five delete. Oh, oh, okay. So if you type it, it deletes itself and then does a thing. I gotcha. Uh, so. Yeah. Cool. I'll put it in the real thing later. Um, what that'll let me do is basically just give me a little warning if I'm about to type my password in on stream, which I don't want to do at all. Let's put five of those. Uh, right, so. I don't know if you hear the five beeps or whatever, but that's hopefully will let me know. Like, watch out. I wonder if you could. Ah, uh, I got an interesting idea. Let's see if this works. 
uh, text. Where's display text? Display text. Large. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, that's really cool. Um, that we obviously have to look for some different songs or sounds. The site looks old. Zap splat. Oh, like I don't want to pay. Come on. Tasmanian Devil. Okay. Uh, all right, we'll just do this for one more second. Don't like that. Fire check horn. I think we found our winner. I don't know if we need which one. I just want to see if we can put in a, a different sound effect. Um, I guess I need to make a sounds folder. I've kind of gotten in the habit now of doing capital letters, kind of freaks for stuff, not programming stuff, but other things. It's kind of weird. Now we're just playing. Other. Sounds, alerts. Yeah, it looks like you can do it in MV3. I wish it would stop there. I could edit it, but maybe I will. Like that, that first little bit's enough, but like. Stop. 
That's awesome. <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it. I'll put the actual keys in there. Uh, that's the preface. Uh, off stream, it's just off stream. So you don't. I made the password longer, just add some more at the start. It's, you could probably see it, but again, I'm not gonna leak the info. Um, Oh my god. Uh, oh yeah, see this one didn't resize. Yeah, that's just not going to do it. thought it was, but we'll have to keep messing with that. Uh, so next up, got to work on seeing if we can get into Twitch. Um, which this may be... Uh, let's see where we at. Yeah, this, this may be long and tedious. Um, and not a whole lot going on because I haven't really even looked at the docs yet, but we want to get into um, I want to see what's in the Twitch API basically um, and specifically I want to see if I can write stuff to chat because I think it would be neat to be able to like fire stuff to chat um, oops why not working what's going on Like I want to make my own chat bot is what it amounts to. Um, what was that? Your partner's creating a creative program in the next few weeks. Looks here. Oh, for some reason I thought it was like a programming thing. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, giant text. All right. Hopefully, yeah, you all can read that. Uh, let's see. Select like the app tab and register your application. Enter the name and app name and your OAuth. Redirect your eye, which users are re redirected to after being authorized. Click manage. Twitch API provides tools for developing integration, integrations with Twitch. Here's a quick example to get you started. Make a basic request to get the top streams for a specific game. Okay. Curl the creation request, get all that jazz, and you pass a client ID header and an auth header. Throws back JSON. What's next? Uh, let's see. Chat reference. Sounds delightful. Twitch API is deprecated. Okay. This chat reference? Ooh, I saw the word chatbots down there. If I spell it right. Develop one more bots for your channel. For example, they already have several non-Twitch IRC channels. Other developers prefer IRC because it's lightweight and can thus be used on machines that are less powerful than the web interface. The differences are necessary to accommodate the massive scale of which our chat servers operate. Well, IRC gen servers generally follow RC 1459. There are several cases where it behaves slightly differently. All references to channel and user References to channel and usernames, not IDs. Always in on the channel name, channel in lowercase. 
Okay. To authenticate, you provide pass. Should be an OAuth token authorized through our API. And should use both chat read scope to read messages and chat edit scope to send messages. Token must have a prefix OAuth. For example, if token's ABC, it'd be OAuth ABCD. Do we get a token for your account? Use this. Okay, we'll look at that in a minute. Your nickname must be your Twitch username in lowercase. At once every five minutes, the server will send you a ping. TMI Twitch TV to ensure your connection to the server is not prematurely terminated. Reply with ping. Pong. Yeah. Known to verified bots. The two special such as bots. Enhance the Twitch user experience. Known and verified. Processes provide elevated privileges. Verified bots have higher throughput than known bots. Verified status is granted only rarely. Both known have higher chat limits than regular users. Are not exempt from auto mod. Are exempt from whispers being dropped for being spam. Spam class where I still run against these whispers, they're maybe marked as spam, and their spam state is logged for auditing purposes, okay? Request known or verified bots status, do that. Select IRC command and message rate. Okay, limits. There are limits to other IRC commands or messages you're allowed to send to the server. If you exceed these, you're locked out of chat for 30 minutes. Okay. Authenticate and join right limits are 20 authentication attempts. 20 join attempts. Users sending commands or messages to the channel in which they do not have a moderator or operator. 100 per 30 seconds sending commands or messages which they do have a moderator. Okay. Yeah, verified bot gets you a lot. 100,000 versus 500. I don't need that yet. Who knows? Generic IRC commands. Join a channel. Proof messages, private messages, okay. Twitch RC capabilities. Register, Twitch, register for Twitch specific capabilities to access Twitch specific commands. The decaching's events are not sent to the channel immediately. They're batched every every 10 seconds. Is that for everything? Or is that just for, surely that's not everything. That's just for this other stuff that they're talking about, right? Sorry, see three three message tags to several commands. Don't know what this means. Cool. Um, cool. Okay. So I don't know. Let's start uh, Python IRC. <laughs> No idea what I'm doing right now. Chat on IRC. That's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> I 
in order to understand how to make an IRC client, it's best to read up first on the specs. Oh, this is gonna be no joke. Following modules might be of interest. Library itself. Yeah, so I guess with IRC, you actually have to have something stayed connected that is connected, staying connected, whatever. But like IRC bot implementation, that sounds interesting. Yeah, these are the IRCs of Python. I haven't been on IRC in forever. How do I program a simple IRC button? To connect an IRC channel, you must send certain IRC protocol specific commands. When is this? This is all a long time ago, right? 2010, yeah. 13 years ago, 12 years ago. When is this? I'm going to use the library. All right. Uh, here, let's go ahead and actually make a Git repo for this. Always do that. I wish it would warn you if you're trying to make it in a... Where am I going? Um... Touchbot Alpha. All right. Git ignore. Git ignore. Set up our ignore file. adjustment can you put that on yeah oh please tell me it centers oh I still can't quite see it uh oh it's still there all right what does that gonna look like Of course, I'm super announcing that that's what I'm doing, but you know, that's the, it's better than if I keep going, I guess. Sorry. I just wanted to see if that was going. So one more time. Stop. Uh, 
I'm very happy with that. All right, where are we going? I've been moving stuff around recently and I'm, I think I like it, but it's still just a little bit throwing me. New environment, all that jazz. Sounds good. Create from existing sources since we got a GitHub in there, a new window. It took some time. No, oh, and actually I can do this from, so Python console, no, I want the regular console. Oh, well, so, oh, it's a straight console, right? So I can just do, here, right? Yeah, look at that. What did I miss? Oh, idea. Okay, gotcha. Whatever. Uh, pip install IRC, right? When was this last updated? Requires 3.6. That's a good sign. Kind of wish there were dates on this stuff. 2016, whatever. That's really fine. Oh, released September 8, 2020. That's a good sign. I'll look at the IRC specs for a second, but if you want to write an IRC client, you need to read this carefully. It does not include details on DCC, CT, CP, which came later and are described in the following. Oh, client to client protocol. Oh, interesting. Oh, they're pointing to the web archive or to the archive.org. Or if they always do that. I have a feeling I'm just going to hack on some code and see what happens without totally understanding it. Things pars, messages they are by calling methods, current limitations, library itself, read the code along with the comments on the doc strings to get a grip on what it does, use it at your own risk, and read the source Luke. Client AIO, I don't know what that is. But utilizing Python 3's native asynchronous library for a core event loop, okay. Asynchronous IO, I gotcha. RC bot and a server imitation. Uh, 
Oh, where's one, two? Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. GitHub. Scripts. Test bot. Fade to black. That is not encouraging. Like, mo like most projects, documentation is lacking. A simple example of how to use the IRC client. IRC cat reads text from stand-in and writes it to the specified user or channel of an IRC server. Let's see, that might be very cool. This is my favorite. This, uh, this person on Twitter. Twitter. Do you have a blog? I don't know what that is. Oh, Keybase. There, blog. Uh, what am I doing? Add him to people. Sweet. We'll also add him to people here. Oops, get that open. All right, let's get back to this. Target none, the nick of the channel to which you send a message. On connect. On join main loop with the connection. Okay. Get lines. While true yields stand in as read line. Okay. Main loop. Parser. Main, globals, target, args, get args, parser, add args, server. I don't know where the argument parser comes into play. Reactor. Reactor, process forever. Hi, global handle, welcome, join, disconnect. All right, let's see if we make this happen. Surely somebody has written this up. Find Twitch chatbot. Fiverr from top freelance services. Hey, Twitch dev. <laughs> Install Twitch IRC. Done. To run the chatbot, you'll need to provide an OAuth access token with a chat login scope. You can reference an authentication sample to accomplish this. Or simply, you can reference an authentication sample to authorize this, accomplish this, or simply use the OAuth generator.
takes all that stuff in. Get the channel ID. ID. We need to this for version five API calls. Wait, when was this? Because five got deprecated, is what it said a minute ago. March thirteenth. I'm assuming this year. Uh, I mean, that's our code. Oh, 2017, though. Back up. Seven months ago, yeah. March, oh god, March was seven months ago. Uh, pen. Bots. Twitch. I don't really understand this a little bit better. Um, I'm starting it. I'm going to start at main. So define main. If if main, define main. Oh, I like this scope back up. I haven't seen actually that call that much like that. Which is funny because it seems pretty straightforward. So if you don't get five arguments, puke. Because it needs to be one, two, three, four. I guess Twitch bot counts as an argument. If it's not five, maybe one argument is automatically a thing. I don't actually know how sysarg works. List of commands. Arc zero is a script name. Okay. So that's why it, it's four plus the script name. So then we set all that stuff. And then we call it. That goes to Twitch bot. We make a new Twitch bot with all that stuff. Get the channel IG D. We will need this. Kraken. It's a good name for a thing. Plus channel headers. Request. Get. What are you using for? I guess it's built. Oh, requests. Request.get, there you go. URL headers, JSON. Self channel ID comes back from the JSON object, okay. Create RC bot connection, server that, port that. Fire it up. On welcome. So I guess something in here fires off the events. Must request specific capabilities before you can use them. Oh, request Twitch TV membership tags commands. If a chat message starts with an exclamation point, try to run it as a command. <clears throat> do command pull the api to get the current game if command equals game private message display name is currently playing the game pull the api to get the current status of the stream 
Man title. Got a crack in with the channel ID. With your header. Make the call. That's weird. This is all, I think this is all duplicate code. I mean, this is not, that's not like a knock. It's just trying to understand what's going on. Yeah, so the game and the title just come down and whatever this JSON object is. Provide basic information blur viewers for specific commands. Raffle, example bot replaces text with your raffle. Schedule. So this thing watches for commands. That's cool. Didn't understand your command name. So how do you send stuff? Because that's private message. How do you post something to the general chat? One of my followers and become famous? Hello, bot. How do we ban you? Show mod icons. Delete message, timeout, ban. Let's try it and see what happens. So from there, which I guess really here. Actually, no, it's linked straight to it. Well, why not do both? Is this IRC? Yeah. Usage. Must get token from here. Copy link. Uh, all right, I'm gonna blur the screen for a minute while I go look at that link and see uh, See what's up with it. Let's see about getting a token. That you log an IRC using an OAuth token instead of plain text password or hash for digital security. Here. That's what this looks like. To revoke access, disconnect Twitter for Twitch settings. This tool generates an OAuth token to authenticate with Twitch IRC. The entire presentation Token including OAuth can be substituted for your old password in IRC. Okay.
Okay, so clicking that and it says Twitch chat author, author, authorization uh, lets you do everything. Uh, oh, cut VODs. Look at that. Uh, oh, this is cool. I can update my title and stuff so I can do that automatically from, from my little thing instead of having to log in and do it. That's cool. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, be right back. Okay, give me a minute, because what I'm going to do is set that up in a way that I can get to it without flashing it. Um, Set up. Let me just get to it. I need to see about using um, environmental variables. Uh, not environmental variables. Um, Keychain variables. This is all wrong. Stand by. Let me just make sure this is working here. So I can do this. Yes, this is fine. Um, so I've got a little function that I use. Which I think I can make this outside and just put it here. Because a client ID. the token. So I keep my tokens encrypted, not with a password, but just obfuscated um, in this little get credentials thing so I can do this kind of stuff without having to worry about it. Um, click 
deploying it on the back end. Yeah, so hopefully I don't have to worry about it. Um, that was not what I want to do. Where am I going? Uh, so username. Where do we get the use? So username should just be data valid. I don't know where the client ID comes into play. You registered applications client ID to allow API calls to the bot. I don't have one of those. So you need, okay, so you need more. After you've cleansed this repository, Run the chatbot, you need to provide OAuth token with a chat login scope. You can reference an authentication sample to do this or simply use, okay. So, where is. See, this doesn't. Oh, they're doing this in node. I need to get on the node train, I guess. To authenticate your chatbot in a production setting, we recommend you register your app chatbot and use the OAuth code flow. Okay. I'm going to hide for a minute while I go look at this. Oh, read apps and authentication guide. I guess I can do that. This guy describes how to use Twitch authentication to enable your applications to take actions on behalf of a Twitch account. Preferred method is OAuth. We use OAuth2. It's got open ID. Authentication involves register your app to attain a client ID and a secret key. Getting a token. Sending your token to API request. See, this is confusing. Oh, I guess we only need the client ID. It's not like a secret, we're using OAuth, but it's not doing. Like I always get a little spun around on this stuff. All right, we're just gonna try registering an app and see what's gonna happen. Enter your redirect URI where users are redirected after being authenticated. You could provide several redirect URIs. For example, if you wish the same client for different environments. So we're gonna do this. Once you create a developer app, you're assigned a client ID. Some authentication flows require a client secret, which you can generate on the same page as the ID, which this doesn't need a secret. Okay. Client IDs are public and be shared. Client secrets are equivalent to the password. Uh, also, application should request the appropriate scopes for the entire APIs. Failure to the guidelines may result in the suspension. Yep, don't screw around. ID tokens, user access tokens. 
Getting tokens. We're back here. Um, but we just need the client ID. Username, client ID, and what was the last part that we needed? Channel. Which I'm guessing is my thing. Uh, on the wrong one. Still on the wrong one. Register. Registration. Here you go. All right, be right back. Twitch developer wants to see my email address. That is allowed. Um, yeah, so you can see this too. So, uh, we'll receive, we'll receive the result of all client authorizations, either an access token or a failure message. They must mat exactly match. The redirect URI parameter passed to the authorization endpoint. When testing locally, you can set this to localhost. Maximum of 10 URLs is reported. Okay. I guess. Um, chatbot. All right. So that's what the screen comes to. You'll see, hey, we've registered. Now I'm gonna go to manage. Uh, it's giving me a client ID here. And I'm going to go ahead and generate a secret key. I need it, but cool. Um, that was easy. <laughs> I love it when it's the process is basically it's like here, click this button, you're good. Here's a go play. But I mean, it's in their best interest, right? Because if I make something cool that helps them, that's good for them. Uh, oh, I guess you can see this again. Uh, all right, so where's our... ID 
which they say is like of username. So I can show it to you. Password or token, whatever. Channel. Oh. Exploded. Line 10, import request, module nine. Okay. Can't get, why didn't that work? Cause I spelled it wrong. I reverse I and A constantly. Apparently still didn't get it. How about this? We'll just copy it straight to the clipboard and do it that way. Oh, it's gotta have the .asc on it. That makes sense. <laughs> I keep getting nervous. I'm like, oh, let's go. Is it gonna work? Looks like it's doing it's connected or something. Wait, what are the commands you can do? Game and game one of them? Oh. Well, it didn't explode. Twitch token username. Client ID token channel. I mean, that's got to be right. What does that do? I just banned somebody's second here. I'm going to refresh that because I keep seeing the word banned up there. I'm like, oh. <gasps> oh, come on. I feel like it's, I feel like we're there. Yeah, so if Oh, it didn't print joining self channel. It didn't connect to the server. Okay. It's just hung somewhere. Wait a minute. This is Python 2 code, isn't it? This print statement doesn't make sense. Oh, because it was not in the same virtual environment. Like this. AKZG. All right, man. I'll see about it. Uh,. Maybe. I 
I don't know how to uh, get to your thing. Curious how you found me, but sure, why not? Oh, actually, I can't, because uh, that'll eat my bandwidth. Good luck. All right, what's going on? Why? See, this looks like... Wait, this looks like different code. What the hell? Print. Where are those print statements? Print. Yeah, see, look at this. That's not. Well, so one, it switched different line. It's on a different line. What is going on? Something strange. See, that bounced to a new line. But also. I think that's Python 2. Right? Because it doesn't have the prints around it. All right, let's try that. Uh, how do we do that? We make a new Python project. I'm just going to throw this on the Desktop right now. New virtual environment, base interpreter, Python 2. Desktop, open. Whoops, not just the desktop. that. Let's try that. New window. But also, and also we're going to download this because that's something about that copy freaked it out because it puts stuff on different lines. Actually, probably just do this. Be kind of nice if they actually put it's a terminal. Install. Oh, whoops, I guess we can do this. Requests. And then we need to grab our this stuff again. Because we want to drop that in right here. So that's going to be our token. <laughs> that chat message came up a second ago and I was like, oh, it worked. Didn't work. Hmm. 
Yeah, see, print, there, okay, this looks happier. The Ed of Allen. Uh, go get our client ID. Whatever. The Id of Allen. Oh. Module has no attribute run. Oh, did I not do sub process? I did. Oh. This is going to be a Python 2 versus Python 3 thing, isn't it? Oh. Oh, frustrating. Um, all right, I'm going to run this hidden for a second just to see if it works. And if so, I'll work on getting the credentials set back up for real. I haven't run Python 2 code with that thing, obviously. I need to make it, uh, do an update for that. Let me just see what happens if you... Okay, so connecting. That's good. So we're at least seeing that. And now it should bounce, I think, right? Or it should... I don't know, does it just hang forever if you don't pass the right stuff to it? While we're waiting on that... Uh, tab... Python... Which I'm guessing is Python 2... Um, Yes, yeah, sub process run. So that works in three. It doesn't work in two, right? Whatever, just LS. It's fine. It's just going to run. Yeah, so that is only for Python 3. Which I didn't realize until now. Is there a sub process check output that will work? Response, file, standout argument not allowed, it will be overridden. Standout argument not allowed. Oh, wait. That's progress. Oh, and wait a minute. It didn't explode. That's a good sign. I was probably trying to do an edit kick us yet. Nah, it's just sitting there. Wait a minute. Oh, you can't see me typing. Oh, hey, wait, wait. Is he going to move him? so slow it's doing it it's just so slow
Okay, I don't think that's doing anything. Where am I going? Code runner. Where's code runner? Everything moved a second ago. Well, I just did it this way. Code runner. Right? Cool. Um, let me look at one thing here. Example. We're gonna blur it for just a second. There we go. Yeah. So this. Okay. Now we got a new one. Um. I guess. Guess I can format it. So this is basically what works or what happens is I've got, I store my credentials encrypted. Um, like, whoops, ah, everything's crashing. Yes, I know. Uh, so I store my credentials just encrypted just so the files are hanging out like if you're on my machine, you can still get to these. You can still decrypt them. Like I'm not putting a password on an encryption, but this is how I make sure that I don't accidentally flash them. And then I can store them and call them with this little subroutine or this little method or function, whatever you want to call it. And that's how I pull them into variables. So that way I, I just, I always just, they all just sit in a directory. They're all encrypted and I just access them that way. Um, I'm going to look at the keychain stuff too and actually pop maybe here in a minute. Um, this might be a good time to actually do that. Um, but so we're going to redo this. So does this work in Python three? It does. Okay. So we're going to redo this. So we're just going to name it this. And I put the thing under there, whatever. Return. Da, 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 da. With file path here. Get credentials for the file path. Oh, get credentials not fine. I right, see. Get credential. I think I'm gonna call it get credentials from now on because I always do that. Also, I often re reverse it, but whatever. See if that works. Python three. And we know it's three because if we do this, it explodes, right? Yep. I 
Oh, but I did want to do this split and then get so this this little last bit helps you. So it's stored in a file. If I accidentally grab, if I accidentally have a new line on it, this splits on new line and takes the first thing. So uh, we're gonna add that into the mix as well. So we should, should still have it. I'll just make sure that's all cool. So that's our function now, which can go here. Why is that? Oh, is it? Gotcha. It's wrapping. See, I did it again. And also we're to call this get credentials. Okay, backing up. So we made a connection, so that's progress. We're in the right version of Python. We've got this now. Why did it feel like that added a line? It's on 87, went to 88. Oh, is this on 87? Oh, that's moving up a line. Okay, I gotcha. Something looked different. Okay, so that's calling it. We're calling it here. Connecting. Where is connecting? Connecting. Single server with IRC bot server. OAuth token username username. Nope. Channel. It's adding a pound. So username. Single server IRC bot. Get the channel ID. We will need this for five. want to see what it's doing. Oops. Wait a minute. It is just... I mean, your username is your channel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're going to zap through time here for a second. Going through time. Yeah. Um, how, why isn't this going? Uh, So it's connecting up, but it's, yeah, actually let's see if it's, what's doing now, if it's giving us a channel ID. Yeah, so there's a channel ID. What if we put that in? Oops, did not like that.
Wisdom decks out of range. User is user ID. Okay. Um, I think it's. I think the I'm trying to make a Twitter bot here, Twitch bot here, and it looks like it's connecting. But um, Twitchio, no. Twitch IO, I guess would be a better call for that. This did not come up at all in my searches. Huh. And it's Python 3. Okay, nice. Twitch I uses many endpoints, which require different tokens and IDs. Okay, I've got the OAuth and I've got the client. It's going to change my life. Sweet. I like things that change my life. Oh, link didn't work. Oh, it went over there. Why is that going to? Oh, because I'm in a Chrome browser for that. I understand what's going on. <laughs> really? <laughs> did you did you get to Twitch IO that way, or Twitch? What, what's the name of it? I forget. Uh, I lost it already. Here, let's just uh, run it. Gotta get my thing set back up there. Uh, Twitch IO, look at that. Uh oh. Oh, this is a Python 3, uh, Python 2 uh, thing. Scratchpad, this is 3. <laughs> I got it going. Now what? I love it. Um, GPIO, G, uh, what's GPIO? I mean, IO input output, what is GP general pin on the Raspberry Pi? I actually don't know what that is. Hey, it worked. Yes. General purpose IO. Okay, that makes sense. Those are like the base pins that you that can do anything, right? Is general purpose? I mean, that seems like the description of general purpose. I've I've went to like one little workshop on a Raspberry Pi. Actually, it was Arduino. Sorry, I'm gonna get murdered for that. Um, but haven't really mess messed with it much. They interest me, but just hasn't gotten in there yet yeah oh, okay so it's a binary switch i got you or a whatever pin uh from that let's see what this does and it token client id initial channels okay event salt decoration subclass So gives you a prints ready message. Okay. Well, right, let's just copy it in and see what happens. Oh, sweet, sweet.
Let's maybe reload that page and see if it works the second time. There we go. I got an account on Twitch. Yeah, I got the OAuth. Yeah, request your app. Yeah, I got that. Okay, cool. Install things. So far, so good. Oh, put the secrets in environment. Okay, the NV file. I gotcha. Inside bot.py. So the bot nick. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's the name. It's the name of it. I gotcha. Bot prefix. What's the bot prefix? Is that in? Yeah, prefix is bang. Okay. Oh, but that's already in there. Uh, here. I'm not worried about the client ID, um, because they talk about how that's shareable. So this should be the nickname. Uh, let me grab this. Oops, just need this. I've got my OAuth credential stored here. Um, so it's already there for me. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess I could store my token or my client. Here, give me one second. I'm going to hide my token or hide my uh, whatever this thing is. Uh, client ID. second while I get this thing lined up. Store, uh, I store all my credentials um, in encrypted files, so I just got a little decryption routine that pulls them back out, so I can turn that back on now. Um, oh, actually, one second. Yeah, I... So when I started doing the stream stuff, I got super paranoid about that. And so I just run a little, um, uh, credentials, read me. So I just got the GPG key. It's, it's not encrypted itself. This is only for obfuscation, but it makes sure that I don't accidentally flash the files, but you just encrypt them. And then I just call this to decrypt them whenever I want them. Uh, and it just always goes to a path. I always know where they are. I'm also, depending on how late tonight goes, I'm actually going to look. Uh, so on a Mac, there's that keychain access. 
and I want to see if I can actually store stuff in there and then just really not have to worry about it. But I haven't gotten that far yet. I want to get the bot working first. Um, I don't know why I did that. LL is what I hit all the time. It's my go-to. Uh, all right, so we're calling our token and our client ID. Prefix, did you just do bang for prefix? Yeah, okay. And then channel, yeah. So we'll just do. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. That was, it's the hallucinating version of the matrix or something. Um, all right, so I think I got all that stuff in. Uh, bu -bu -bu. What's this one called? Twitch. And we don't pass anything, right? Because it's all called, so it should just go. Ooh. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> Sweet. Oh my god, that's so exciting. Oh, that's so cool. Test tell oh sweet it comes out for me that's awesome holy crap that's cool oh that's fun I have n I have a small idea of what I'm gonna do with this but like uh, I got some percolation ideas I think I want to try um okay so like the bangs uh to do stuff uh, yeah let me see that doc real quick. I'm just going to scan through the rest of this and saw the same. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Event ready. Called one spot because the lime. Yep, gotcha. Respond. Runs every time a message is sent in chat. Yeek, that's a lot. Making a chat command. Okay, here you go. Bot command. Name test. Which is already, that's what was in there, right? Somewhere. Oh, yeah. Com commands, command, same test. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, I was, this, I didn't, it didn't come up at all when I was trying to Google around for it. Um, I don't know how I missed it, but my Google foo was just poor tonight. Um, because this is super the way to go. Uh, part of me wants to see if I can still figure out how to get that other thing to work, but that's not going to happen, probably. Uh, here, here's all your test stuff. Oh, that's the full thing. Congrats. Cool. That's super cool. Um, Twitch.io. Who... Uh, is this just a group? Nice. Yeah, updated 19 days ago, so they're on it too. One repo, Twitch.io. Oh, really? That's cool. Um, I have heard about it from another streamer too. I'm assuming you stream. Is that a safe bet? Did I spell that right? Does this person look familiar to you? Not so much on the streaming? Eh. It's all good. Uh, that's really cool. Um, yeah, so that's you. That's to me. Uh, yeah, so what I think I want to try and do. So I really, I'm not a, a fan. Or last night, but you don't have a following. I, hey, I don't either. Hello. 
Talking about stream bot stuff in the future. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just do it because I like it. I find that it gives me like focus in a weird way. And it gives me the energy to actually go do stuff. Like after work, it's easy for me to not go like make things. But like when I'm on stream, there's that little bit extra like hit to have it happen. And it's just like, huh, okay, I can go focus for a while on some stuff and and then get chat things that basically save me hours and hours and hours of work. Um, turns out that's really nice. Um, hey, JS, how's it going, man? Um, but yeah, so I, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Uh, and so my bot idea, here's my bot idea. I want to get, so here's the, here's, I don't know if this is a complete thought yet, but I want to have a YouTube playlist. Oh, you do JavaScript API stuff? Yeah. Right. Um, and I don't do much programming stuff these days, or development stuff these days. So this is also a way for me to kind of get there a little bit. Uh, all the good streaming. But yeah, so here's here's just got a mic and a, on Prime the other day. Yeah. Prime day. It's awesome. Uh, I had this mic for like two years because of something way back and then started doing some streaming stuff and then was like, oh, wait, I can sound a little bit better because I already have the mic. So, ta-da. Uh, and then I went a little crazy. It's like, ooh, a green screen. Bad. It's this quarantine stuff just keeps me like... It's the other thing that's nice about the stream, right? It's a little bit of like, hey, occasionally there's people out there. <laughs> JS, but you've Python and Django before. Django is what I've been working on as well. Um, it's fighting with the tutorial stuff with it. Um, but, uh, oh, thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, the, the, tutori the official tutorial on Django was just kicking my ass. So I've been messing around with some other stuff. Um, and I've got some other tutorials that I want to go watch. But that's, uh, I've got a little, um, like a local host site that I keep going. I want to switch this over to Django just as a thing to do. Cause right now it's just a collection of a bunch of PHP files that it's, there's no framework or anything. It's just thrown together PHP to make things happen. Um, so I want to get that into a more like formalized thing. And when I do code work these days, it is Python. So I want to go ahead and do Django. Um, and then was talking with another person last night about like the Django rest API stuff that you can do. Uh, and so I'm, and that, and then once I do that kind of stuff, I'll probably bang into some JavaScript of the of the newer JavaScript stuff. Um, I'm curious about React, but I haven't really messed with it. Yeah, Django REST. Yeah, um, everybody everybody that I've talked to about it has said, yeah, it's like. So I'm really looking forward to playing with it. Uh, I think I've just about got my head around most of the stuff. Um, I went a little crazy and was like, I'm going to write my own tutorial and like kind of walk through this stuff to learn it. Um, that was not really the best idea, but it was an interesting experience, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Dendra, I've heard lots of people talk about exactly that. And that's what's got me interested because I've heard a lot of good things about React and I've heard a lot of good things about the REST API, even though I'd kind of forgotten about it until last night. Um, but looking at that marriage seems like it's a pretty, pretty solid idea. Um, yeah. And it, it's funny cause like, there's a whole bunch of stuff out there that I've looked around and I've kind of seen, but it's like, I'm one of those, I like, I kind of want to like, I want to hurt myself getting into it just a little bit and like bang into all the things sometimes to not forever, but just for a little bit, just so they kind of like, that's how I feel around a little bit, I guess. Um, the, but then like I banged into plenty tonight and then you showed Twitch IO and it's like, whew, okay, we're ready to just jump right on over. Oh, you teach react. Nice. Very cool. Um, is, do you stream your teaching? Uh, or is that forbidden by your university? No doubt. 
And also I do like the, the learning by teaching thing. Like it's, and the other thing that I figured out uh, a little while ago, the other thing that helps on the streams is, uh, are y'all familiar with rubber duck debugging? That kind of idea that like, if you're working on a prod problem and you're kind of stuck on it, you go talk to a coworker and just the process of describing it, you kind of figure something out. And so you almost don't need a person to be there, but you need something to talk to and you get a rubber duck and you could do the same thing. Streaming for me is the same thing. Like the way I think is different or I think differently when I'm talking out loud and talking to the stream and like walking through the stuff that I'm doing. I, I know several times I felt myself shift over and do something differently than I otherwise would have. Sometimes that's even like skipping shortcuts. Like when I was doing testing stuff, it was like, I could skip this, but then I was like, but I'm not going to because I'm on stream right now. So yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's I'm, I'm really, it's this the stuff is super interesting for me. Um, Oh, never really had outside of camp, not many viewers. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, the shortcuts comment, wait, wait, you lost me on that one. Shortcuts comment. Do, 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 do. Lost it. Um, all, right, all right, all right, all right, what's going on? How, oh yeah, look at this. Haha, -ha, I like that shortcuts comment. It says, I love this. Oh, like not taking shortcuts. Oh, yeah, I gotcha, yeah. Um, and it, yeah, it's, and it's fun too, because it's like one of those, I, I don't know, it it works for me, it works for my brain, whatever. Um, I'm enjoying the hell out of it and it, it has helped me do stuff better. Uh, and that's like win-win, right? Um, also, I'm super excited about this. Uh, Cause, oh yeah, so my idea, sorry, my idea, back to the idea. Uh, so the basic idea is having, like I wanna have, I'm, I've got YouTube's free music up here so that like I won't get copyright struck. Um, but what I'd really like to have is like, you know, Spotify or like regular music going. So what I'm thinking we could try to build is like a playlist synchronization thing that's out of band of the video. So I could be listening to my YouTube playlist and there would be a link that y'all could have that would get you to the same playlist. And then out of band, we could actually sync them up so that you could be hearing basically the same thing, right? There's gonna be a few seconds delay or, or, or advance or whatever, but by and large, we'd be on the same song. And then I, it wouldn't feel so weird to have like me being listened into, you know, real stuff. Cause I like a little something in the background sometimes or like most of the time. Um, but so that's, that's kind of where the idea is. Um, oh yeah, I'm not surprised somebody else is working on it. Uh, I don't think I remember who Michael Reeves is. Giant fonts, giant, giant fonts. Uh, this guy. Oh, so yeah, so the secret stuff. Um, we were just talking about that. Uh, oh, I don't think I've seen this uh, this person before. Your robot ideas are stupid. Huh. I'm assuming this is the right person, right? Popular YouTuber? Yeah, okay, I gotcha. Oh, that's cool, yeah. And like, this is not an original idea. There's probably 50 people trying to work on this at this instant and another 500 that are asleep right now. But like, yeah, see what happens. Give it a shot. Um, and it's like, I'm not, I, I don't expect that to like become the billionaire business. 
a few million would be nice. No, whatever. Um, but yeah, so Jester, the we were just talking about the private stuff. So the way that I deal with at least some of that is um, I store my credentials in um, encrypted files that are all sitting in a single directory uh, that uh, that look like this. So I can actually show you one of them. Uh, credentials example. So all everything looks like that, which is a PGP public private key encryption. Uh, and then inside my scripts, I have this little function that I do this get credentials that I call and just pass the file path to the potential potential particular credential that I'm after. And then that loads it into a variable for me. So it's it's like putting it in environmental variables or doing that, but it like I like the fact that it's encrypted and to be clear, the encrypted is not for safety. Like it's not like the public key is on my machine. And if you get on my machine, you've got it because the public key doesn't have a, or sorry, the private key doesn't have a, a password associated with it. It's, it's for not flashing it. Like I just want to make sure I've done everything I can to not accidentally show it to you. So if I accidentally open that file or click on that somehow, all you're going to see is, is encrypted gobbledygook that you can't get to without the private key that's on the machine. So that's how I'm dealing with that. Um, I'm also going to be looking at the uh, the Mac keychain um, to see if I can actually throw stuff directly in there and access it from the script as well. Um, that's on my to-do list, but that's that's how I kind of deal with that. Private email stuff, I just, yeah, I've got a checklist that I go through. Um, the There's my Twitch checklist for getting started for a stream and like, uh, and another thing that I just built with um, Keyboard Maestro is this prep setup. And at the the end portions of the setup are quit my journal, quit Outlook, quit things, quit stickies. Like I try and put as many things as possible to automatically make sure that I'm not going to accidentally do something. Um, so that's kind of... It feels a little risky. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, it, it's risky. Um, I, I make sure my password manager is over there on the other side. I keep my password manager unlocked on the other screen. That way I don't have to type my password. Oh, yeah, actually, I don't know if you all saw this. But so I built a thing today, and this isn't the real password. But if I accidentally start typing my password, Stop. it does that. because I don't want to accidentally type my password and that should let me know. So yeah, that's, I'm with you on the scared stuff. <laughs> right. I, I messed around with that. Like, so I got the, I got the little thing to trigger on like in no time, like getting this uh, keyboard Meister app. Um, like all you do is say, like, if you type a couple things, do actions and I played with the actions for like 10 minutes to figure out like what kind of alert I wanted to have it do. So, um, I've got to go back in and, and pat and do, so I'm adding, or I've added a preface to my password. My password's already kind of long and I've added more to it that will, I'm going to update legitimately with that, with those tokens. So if I ac accidentally start typing them, it'll yell at me. Um, so that's, that's the idea there. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's one thing. Oh, I didn't know OBS had an API. OBS. Whoops, come here. That's the wrong thing. I was going to do this. I was going to do this. Lua scripting. Okay. Windows currently only Python 6.3. Okay, yeah, wait. Scripting adds support for Python. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. Script load, script unload. Yeah, because you could talk back and forth because I, I use a separate machine to stream. 
because my five-year-old Mac doesn't deal well with firing up OBS. Um, so I, yeah, if I could talk back and forth to it, that'd be cool. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Because the other one I was thinking about doing that would be neat is not is having like chat kind of only show up when new stuff was coming in instead of being there the whole time. Um, and I was thinking there might be a way to like, especially if you could be like, hey, here's the last message and then just keep it up there. But like if other messages come in, you could maybe, I don't know, dynamically resize the window. I, I don't know what all you can do with it, but like. I don't know. It seems like, like chat's the one thing that when it's there and it's going, it's cool, but it feels there's a little bit like there might be something else you could do with it there. I will let Tendril answer that. Uh, I'm assuming that's what that, yeah. I and mean, if it's just, if it's just hitting the interface, right? Um, that's front end hotkey. Enumerate scene items within a scene. Hotkeys. Call data source. Or API reference. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's, I don't know, is it too, well, actually, it probably is too low. I messed around with my audio settings today. It is super low right now. That's probably closer to where I normally have it. Um, I messed around with the audio settings today, and it freaked everything out. Yeah, so I never really looked at Streamlabs. I so my other machine actually is a Windows machine. Um, I just haven't really looked at the difference between uh, regular OBS and Streamlabs OBS. Um, oh, they have a Mac version. Yeah, for me, like right now, like I'm still so new at this, like. I haven't gotten all this stuff straight, um, but of course, if there's new toys out there, go by Boinko Cat. Oh, that's cool. Oh, okay. So I, I've seen the stuff that you're talking about. Um, would that be like, I mean, the biggest one I can think of is like Dr. Disrespect type stuff where he's got things kind of all over the place. Or he used to. I don't know. I think he got kind of banned. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep to the band or yep to the <laughs> to the that's his stuff. Or yep to both. Double yep. Anybody ever I haven't looked it up. Anybody ever figure out what happened? Or is it still just like Everybody's just like, e we don't know. Actually, forget I asked that. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, that's actually a professor friend of mine who just happens to have the exact same name, which is very unfortunate. Uh, teaches up in New York, um, Queens College. Definitely not the streamer. Oh, really? That's, yeah, I I saw just a little bit of that. Um, and it was just like, hmm, that seems like something was not happy. So just gonna stay right away from that. Because drama is not so much my thing. Um, all right, let's add a, let's add a command into here. 
What was the uh, what was the syntax for that? Oh, I have tabs. You know, it makes sense. It's just open more tabs. Oh wait, I hadn't been here before. We started a client, stop a data client. To be documented. Events don't need decorator some class. Trans command, test, text. That's all you did, right? Hello? Uh, test. Hello. So that's all you gotta do to make a command. Oh. That's so cool. Uh, okay, so this is running. What can we do with this? That's so cool. Um, I'm trying to figure out, can you, well, so I could, so you could set up like, I'm trying to think if I've got anything cool that you could do that's based off something that's actually on my machine. Um, hmm. Let's see. Uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm doing a thing. So this, cause this could run, right? Since it's on my machine, it could make interactions with my machine, right? So, um, And this is in three. Uh, how would you do? So I'm trying to figure out if there's a way. So you could throw, I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to like throw up a GIF. But you would just have to have the page reload. How could you force the reload? Um, You'd have to use something like live reload. I'm just trying to figure out if you can like, you, you can type a command and like change a GIF that you see like on the screen or something. Um, which I can, I know how to change the GIF, right? Cause we just copy, um, here, let's see if we can do something here. Uh, what does Python use for list files in directory? Glob, okay, that's what I thought. Um, so let's find us some gifts. Nope, that's the wrong place. Yeah, there's, yeah, so the polling was kind of where I was headed. Um, because there's like, so I use, uh, I used to use an app. What was it called? I'm unsure right now, but uh, I've got my local version of my website. Whoops. Loa, the voodoo gods. Um, actually go back, uh, pick one, doesn't matter. So this is on localhost and it's just a static file. But if I make an update to the file and save it, it gets thrown an update and I can't, it's called live reload. Um, that's the name of it. Uh, oh, I don't have a hotkey for that yet. Um, but I, last time I looked at it, Do a pretty simple six using a set interval. Okay. And a fet fu fetch function. That's hard to say. Which give you the URL of a GIF. If the URL is not equal to your current GIFs URL, update it. If the URL is not e Okay, yeah, 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 I gotcha. Okay, right, right, right. Yeah, so I was gonna do that a little bit differently. Um. 
I was going to keep the, I was going to keep the GIF in the same place and then have the page update and just have it make another call to the same URL. But that works too. Cause then you actually just do the straight comparison against the, uh, the URLs. Um, I could argue that one either way. Uh, but yeah, so live reload, but it's. Last time I looked at them, they were. It was like really old. I don't know, maybe they came back to life. Maybe it just had stopped working. Hang on one second. I don't know what all is in there. I don't think it works anymore. Yeah, it just doesn't work. Oh well. Uh, well, so the simple. Okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna go super simple. We're gonna go super simple. Uh, so first things first. Uh, HTML, HTML, body, body, HTML, here, yeah. save. Uh, we're just gonna throw it on the desktop because we're just messing around. Messing around. Display HTML. Display HTML. Ooh, can't make it any smaller than that, huh? All right, so there's display HTML. Actually kind of a bummer that you can't make that smaller. Uh, and then what are we gonna do? So to start with, we'll just get this working. Um, Oh, it needs to be on a host. Sorry. We're going to want it on a thing. So we'll put it on localhost. Actually, we can put it in GIFs. This will work fine. New file. Doc type HTML. HTML. Body, body, HTML. So this is on display. Who PHP? Sure, why not? This is that little local site I was telling you about. Um, close that. Maybe. No, launchpad. That's what I'm looking for. GIFs. So here's my GIFs. Display PHP. Oh. I realize, of course, I could do this super easily, but like... That's... This is the way we're going to do it. Okay, so there's our page. All right, so we got a page. And now we're going to throw a GIF on it. Whoops. Whoops. Uh, launch pad? No, which uh, launch pad? I don't oh, we had it already open already. GIFs. So we go up a directory to GIF files. I'm literally in the same place. Actually cached. 
Let's just pick one. Launch pad. Gift files. Cached. Salute Luke. And if we refresh this, there we go. All right, so now, I wanna write a little method that updates this. And to start with, I'm just gonna write it out directly. With open some path right as whoops display page display page right we're just gonna throw all that junk right at it to start with We can actually do this. I, mean, I want to test it here, and then we'll throw it into the bot. So let's find another GIF. How about ah? Just save that for later. Do that. So if we run this, nope. Oh, that is the wrong path. Let's get our path going. Now if we run it, still goofed it. Oh, Pfft. where I should put the path is here. Uh, what do we call it? We called it display. We're going to copy that. PWC. Now, if we run it, it passes. And if we refresh this, it passes. All right, so we got that. Now we need to list all the GIFs. Uh, GIFs equals glob of all that. And here we're gonna go, whatever. Cache, we'll copy that directory. Slash star dot gif. Running out of space on the side there. So that should still work, right? Nope. How about we import glob? Import glob. Try running. Runs. Now uh, Python random. I feel like I just deleted something. Whoops. Come here. Oh, this is gonna hide chat for a second. Uh,. Python random item from list random choice translator on random choice I like random choice random choice sequence so if we do this 
for here. New URL or new file. Random choice. GIFs. Print new file. What's that gonna do? Random is not defined. Well, let's take care of that. Got it. Import random. Yep. <laughs> you're you're sitting there screaming at the thing to go faster. <laughs> yep. Lag. <laughs> uh, love it. Gives me just like a half second to get to catch it. Uh, sweet. And then we're just gonna replace. We need to turn that into a URL. Uh, so we need, what do we need? We need this to look like this. No, wait. Sub, right? So GIF files, so we want to replace this with that, I think. Oh, it is replace, maybe? Yes. So every time we do that, it's gonna hit a new thing. So now if we pull new file into here, that's a full path, right? It's a full path. So we can do this and come down here and do format. This is super ugly, right? I understand. Like this is not what you should be doing at all. Um, but if we ref run that and refresh, Okay, so we got the updates. Uh, now what we need to do, why does it keep going down there? Don't do that. Um, HTML, refresh, meta. I can't remember the syntax for that. Oops. Show me, where's Mozilla? Give them some love. Except that's not helping me. Okay, you lose. You would think I would have remembered that. That's pretty easy. It's also probably my notes. All right, so we're gonna automatically refresh the page. Every second. Which you shouldn't notice much difference, but let's test if we make an update. Oh, maybe got to refresh it the first time. How about that? There you go. Why isn't it updating? Or what did I do wrong? Oh. <laughs> I know what happened. I'm writing out the whole file. And we'll give it two seconds just to back off in a minute. All right. So refresh one more time. Refresh. And if we run it again, there we go. All right, so now we're gonna throw all this into the bot. need that. All right. So come here, bot. You file with all that jazz. Yeah. So I'm officially 
just randomly opening my machine up to stuff now. That's what's happening. Commands, command, name, new GIF. Oops. Async def new, just call it new GIF, I guess. New GIF. Have no idea what CTX is. We can just do on it. Is that all in the right place? Uh, where is my terminal? There we go. Is it going to explode? Oh. Are you still there? You want to try a new GIF and see what happens? New underscore GIF. I think you need a bang in front of it. An exclamation point. I think. Boom. <laughs> ah. That was entirely too much fun. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's cool. Cause like, so. Hey, perfect. That's so cool. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with that, but I'm gonna do stuff with that. That's fantastic. Yeah, so I mean, it's just it's just another machine wired, right? Um, <laughs> wait, it didn't go. Oh, right, right, right. You can pull it into OBS. That's right. Uh, I'd have to flip the firewall off, but yeah. Um, the oh, you put a thumbs up in front of it. I gotcha. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that way I don't actually have to have it over here. Um, you just put in a URL, right? That's cool. I actually don't know. I can try right now. Browser. Browser. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, oh, I don't know what my. Hang on a second. Oh, good lord, that's huge. All right, let's see. Where is my 192s? Oh, yeah. Uh, one. I didn't work at all. I broke it. Yeah, it's firewalled off. I, I have to bang through the firewall on that.
Uh, but that's definitely doable. Yeah, I just saw it flash a URL, so like I'm sure I can get to it. I think this is just firewalled off on this machine, uh, so I can let that. But I can let that in, um, and then figure it out, and then also have. Well, so yeah, so I can also just run the bot on the stream machine. I don't know. Yeah, I got a lot of thinking to do. <laughs> um. Oh, there will be warnings for spam. You entered the same message 30 seconds ago. Maybe too much. Did that come to you, Jester? Or was the... Because I'm saying on it every time, too. But I'm guessing it's you for new GIF. Is that what's happening? To me, yes. Okay, yeah. I thought that would be case. I don't see that interaction, but... Cool. <laughs> I wonder if it works for me. Can I do it? Should be able to, right? On it. That's really fun. Dude, thanks for the hookup with that. That's really phenomenal. Uh, I have a feeling this is way better than the other one that I was looking at by about a thousand. Uh, possibly a million. I just splash water all over my face. Uh, what was I going to do? I was going to do something else. Uh, oh, yeah, new GIF. So that's coming from me. So it sees you. Oh, yeah, it says on it. Okay, so it's just a full transcript. That's super cool. Was, yeah. I hadn't really thought about the fact. But so you could set this up. For, I'm just thinking, not just with Twitch stuff, but with the IRC stuff, but I didn't really think about IRC as being a way to talk to your machine, like phoning home. So, like, you could be connected to an IRC server. So, like, instead of me having to punch a hole in my firewall to get to my computer to, like, run a command or to do something, you could have something like this talking out to an IRC server, and then you could go into that IRC server issue your commands and have it talk back without have like basically you're meeting in the middle instead of having to go through one firewall or the other. I didn't really thought through that before. That's kind of cool. I mean, I know there's Bastion stuff that does that all the time, but it like jump boxes, but this is a new, a new way to do that or anything to do that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh uh, yeah. Um, that makes perfect sense. Um, Doing the doing the black hat stuff to control botnets that makes perfect sense. Hopefully, I am never a part of a botnet in any way, form, or fashion. <laughs> Either as the command and control, or way more likely as one of the zombies. Um, but uh, yeah, I like that. I like that idea of being able to just kind of bang through stuff. Like I don't really do like file sharing or anything, but like I don't know, it'd be it's one of us. <laughs> um. I don't know just cool to like mess around with and figure something out to do like the same thing like I change gifts that nobody can see I don't know um sorry my brain's just kind of spinning around on all this stuff too it's still still very much enjoying this um MQTT Is this uh, MQ? Is that the same as MQ? Sorry. I move the GIF. Don't move the GIF. I really would like that window to be there. Huh. I don't know this one. <laughs> it just makes me giggle. I love it. Oh yeah, if it's a yeah. 
Um, I, it always freaks me out with Iftita because you got to give them access to your account or to your accounts, to whatever you're doing. And like, I just, I, I know billions of people use it. I just can't do it. Like I've looked at it. I was like, Oh, I'm going to do it this time. And like, oh, it just doesn't, it's not for me. So, but doing this kind of stuff. And that's why I'm like, I'll just build my own Twitch bot instead of like using stuff that they've, they've already wired up. But, um, yeah, Twitch bot to a smart light bulb. Exactly. Um, and that's, that's kind of the stuff that I was thinking that might be fun to do is, um, like make, and I'm, I know a billion people have already done this stuff too or whatever, but like, this would be my version of it. Like make some type of interactivity with chat or with the capability of doing it. So more than just push stuff, but like have, you know, whatever. Um, and that's, I mean, that's what chatbots are, right? But like. I'm thinking about it now for stuff that I want to do. Um, yeah, I, I, this is new to me. I haven't seen this at all. Um, so broker is just your host in the middle, right? Subscriber. Yep. Publisher. Okay. Is it, uh, is it open through now? To standard, is there, we can just like line up hardware. Oh, okay, that's cool. Libraries, you say? What is this? Yeah, whatever. Internet of Things Connectivity Protocol. All right. Okay, okay, yeah. Call back when the client receives a contact. Yeah, response on the server. Publish, okay, yeah. Loop forever, that's my favorites. That seems like not awful. Where do you put your uh, socket IOs for web sockets? Oh, yes. You were typing this right as I typed it. Or you had typed that 30 seconds before I typed it, probably. Um, yeah, machine to machine. Okay, I gotcha. So where do you run your, um, what was the word, the brokers? You just like throw a EC2 box out there somewhere? Or are there just existing ones out there that you can kind of bounce off of? I just run one at home. Gotcha. Yeah, that kind of stuff. I'm getting more and more into that business too. And I'll just throw up like a little EC2 box if I need something to live on the outside world. It's my plan from this point forward um, that I can kind of not have to worry about it uh, and basically not have to worry about it. And like the, the, some of those boxes are so cheap that it's just like, okay, whatever. Um, and then also, like, I haven't looked, there's, um, I know Amazon has a whole bunch of the other, like, uh, MQ type services or whatever for some stuff like that, too. I'm, I wonder if they've got a um, AWS MQTT. Let's see. 
Uh-huh. AWS IoT Core supports dice connections. Use M2 QT. All right. Have to look at this and see what they got. I'm just, I'm so in the Amazon stack these days. It's just like my kind of go-to for stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I've, so I don't have that much going on, but I've got uh, two computers, a cable box, well, three computers, a cable box, uh, and a pretty decent stereo in here. And for, which isn't that, that's not big at all. But this is the wall that the sun hits in the afternoon and the AC um, thermostat is on the other side of the house. So I cook in here <laughs> just because of the, the situation. Like if the thermostat was there, it wouldn't be a big deal, but like it's uh, it gets a little, it gets a little toasty sometimes. But nothing like having a full on rack to sit in there cooking all the time. I'm gonna have to look at this. I, yeah, I've never messed with, with this stuff. I've done some MQ stuff before, way back, but that was it. Um, which, I don't know if that's direct descendant or whatever. <laughs> nice. Free server set setup's coming in. That's uh, that's pretty hot. That's awesome. Hot, right? Heat. That was a, not the joke I meant to make, but whatever. So just have like a pile of them just kind of stacking up, getting de getting dust on them. Do you do Bitcoins? You could make some Bitcoins. Um, right. Yeah, that's that was one of the funniest things when I first started getting into this that I hadn't considered until people were who knew about it were talking to me about it. I was like, oh, I just got all the servers and like electricity, cooling. You gotta think about both those things because it's a real thing. Nice. I don't know the Dell line that well, or I don't know the Dell line at all, really. Um, the, uh, Sweet. If that's the price, that's expensive. Oh, that's a 48. None of these numbers match what I asked for. There you go. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's just older ones. Gotcha. To use. Okay. I was like, if your buddy's, your buddy's dropping these, I've, I, yeah, <laughs> I got, I got to that. I was like, a little bit stunned there if he was just kind of like letting those slide out the door. I was like, you you may, you may want to be careful with that. Yeah, the, uh, uh, oh, so the other one that I've got, and I've got to try and figure this out, is I've got a free NAS box that I built um, that I'd use for all my NAS or whatever. Uh, but right now I'm also trying to push stuff up to AWS for backup. And like, I think I'm going to have to go get an upgraded internet connection because it's so slow. Um, even though I'm pushing like a few terabytes of data because it's all my photo and video archives from forever. Uh, but gives me an excuse to go get a faster internet. So why not? Uh, all right, let's see. You do anything else tonight? I feel like I should do something else. I don't know what it is. Oh, I want to see. I want to do one last look. Python. Keychain Mac. So I saw this key ring, but I kind of don't like the idea because there's there's a security. command that you can use. I think it's actually just security. So 
security. Find an internet password. This will be stuff that I likely blur out the entire thing for. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so you can make passwords in the GUI. Don't be clever and try to think of yourself. Go like here, randomly make one. Yeah, sure. It's kind of outside the point. We can proceed to add it to our keychain using the security one. Security, add generic password, a for user, S is playground, W is password gen. Cram will fail if you already have a service by the name of playground, such as if you followed the GUI example above. See, this is what frustrates me with like tutorial stuff. Here's a command to run, but if you ran the other one, this one's gonna break. Don't do that. Like, if you're going to do this, delete it first. Say, hey, we need to get rid of that one. Delete it. So it's a user, a key, and a value is basically what it is. So the security one until it has no other method of non-interactively accepting passwords with the command line. For this reason, it may be preferable to create the secret using the GUI application. Okay. Uh, retrieving the password from RAM line. Well, using this approach, we can then paste the password in a shell environment without leaking it into a file. Right. See, what I was thinking about do is it's because like there's a Python library out there, this keychain. But yeah, but all it's doing is making these commands, calls, right? I would rather do that myself. Just because I don't want somebody else's, like it's password stuff. I don't want somebody else's code in between me and my passwords. Um. But this is nice because it shows you how to do it. Um, that'll be it. I'll, I'll set something up to play with on that on another time. Um, I'm not going to do that tonight. Uh, and I don't care about setting it. I just want to do the, you know, basically my little thing for getting. Um, yeah, seriously. It's nothing. Uh, just do it. Um, but yeah, that because I'd love to get rid of that. So like I'm I'm happy with that method that I've got of doing the encryption for the passwords and all the other stuff. But like if I could actually throw them in the system keychain and have them be there and then have that be my you know my password manager basically, then cool and not have to deal with them, not even have the files uh, to deal with. Even better. Um, even better. And that's that actually has the benefit of increased security. So like my, my machine's encrypted, right? So if somebody got in the machine, unless they had my password to get in, they couldn't see all the files. Well, they couldn't see it anyways, whatever, it's fine. Um, it's, if I'm at the point where somebody is at uh, my credentials file, I'm probably being hit with a wrench, right? At that point, so I, like, not a whole lot I'm going to do about that. Um, what else was I going to do? I was going to do something else. I had something else in my brain. Uh, but I don't know what it is. I think I may tap out, actually. I am uh, need to go take care of a couple things offline before, uh, before hitting the hay. But you all have a good one. Yeah, the great exit. Yeah, the, con the wrench. That's exactly. Exactly. Hit somebody with a $5 wrench. And it'll take care of you. Um, oh, that would be. I wonder, would you get in trouble 
for showing XKCD things. I don't know. I gotta think about that. I'm gonna, y'all. This has been great. Uh, I'm the bot will be growing. Um, I'm, it, it, there's no worry about it becoming like sentient or anything, but it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. So cool. All right, y'all take it easy. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. And uh, it's been great. See y'all. Bye.